so if you say like definitely uh, are there nights when i feel bad about the comments that i read yes definitely mm. but every the next day morning i feel good about it mm. and these are the challenges which i have to solve mm. and definitely this set of challenges gives me an opportunity to create something bigger and better So the recent acquisition of Nestaway uh, by Orum Proptech had garnered a lot of attention. So could you shed some light on what was the rationale behind of uh, going with this acquisition, and does it align with the vision of your company? If you look at the uh, Proptech ecosystem today, right? So we uh, Proptech is majorly divided into two broad categories. Okay, so one is the sale resale market, yeah. and one is the rental market, right? so sale if you talk about primary sales okay so primary sales we talk about uh, we assume there are like uh, uh, typically 370000 units that gets uh, sold in a year in india mm -hmm. okay so 370 of assume for uh, easy of maths it's 400000 so 400000 units get sold with the average price of 50 to 60 lakhs right where typically any uh, we are talking about majority of the big players that we know Mm. uh they make around 1 to 2% of commission mm. general assume 2% of commission mm. when it gets sold so we are talking about 400000 units which gets sold every year mm. with 50000 rupees with 2% commission is 1 lakh so 400000 into 1 lakh is like 4000 crores yeah so 4000 crores of is a total tam we are talking about mm. visa is if you compare the um, the rental market mm. so roughly we have 2.2 crores Uh, renters in top eight cities in India. So, like ba Mumbai will have like fifteen lakhs of people mm. who are living on rent. I'm assuming very small, like mm. small. Actually, it's not uh, the largest site. So, fifteen lakhs in Mumbai, like that. We have two point two crores. So, out of this twenty two million, two point two crores, one point six million, one point six crores is families, yeah. multi family living, which is the nest advantage, right? Mm. And uh, you have forty lakhs for co living and twenty lakhs for students. Mm. So, two point two crores renters, one point six is families. 40 lakhs is uh, co-living, 20 lakhs is students. Yeah. So 40 lakh and 20 lakh, this 60 lakhs, mm. we have hello world, which is majorly targeted in that segment. Mm. And the, the other uh, 1.6 crores is where Nestaway is focusing on. So, and if you look at the market, like the primary sales market was 4,000 crores. Mm. Now you imagine, like out of this uh, 2.2 crores that we have, they paying average rent if you assume fifteen thousand rupees mm. at a fifteen percent commission, like mm. monthly commission. What I was talking about next time, yeah. right? Twelve to fifteen. If we go for fifteen percent commission, that itself is a sixty thousand crore market. Mm. So at the rental, we are looking at a large chunk of prop tech, which is sixty thousand crore market, right. just in India in top eight cities. Mm. And uh, with Hello World, we had reached twenty thirty percent of the TAM. Seventy mm. percent of the TAM was still left behind. So with Nestaway, we are able mm. to look at those 1.6 crores renters mm. who uh, are present in the across eight cities mm. in the multi-family living segment. Mm. So now you have multi-family living, you have co-living, and you have student living. Mm. So we have now completed the whole diaspora of people, like from yeah. all kind of TGs. That makes it fulfilled. Like mm. we can now expand, and our time is 60,000 crores. That's mm. what we are looking at. And with the right um, uh, things working for us, like in terms of uh, uh, going to the same marketing initiatives, same performance, mm. because like before we had almost reaching the similar kind of demand right. through Hello World. Mm. Now we can uh, reach a similar kind of TG with Nestaway, an and our uh, lot of events, lot of things can we can make it similar, mm. and we can combine it so that we can get a better outcome. So that was whole the reason, like we could completely take care of the rental market, and. Uh, Become uh, have a monopoly, become the largest largest player, and uh, take up this market. So that was the whole reason of going ahead with the uh, acquisition of Nestaway. So the basically you wanted to expand the market right. and also stabilize wherever you are present. So that's right. why this acquisition happened. Right. There are few reports where it has been said that Nestaway has uh, accepted a lower valuation, right? right? And there has been a lot of talks on that. I want to know from you as a entrepreneur, as a founder, and I know it's very difficult. It's very easy said and done. Ki the valuation was this. Why did they settle for this? Is it going in a, uh, you know, low revenue wise, or what? What was the case? I want to know from you now that what was the reason behind this decision? I'm sure there must be too many things that had gone in your 
mindset and your other founder mindset to settle for a certain valuation how did you come up with this decision to settle with this valuation this will have more uh, philosophical answer in looking at hmm. the uh, numbers so life is long so and um, in life we get uh, multiple opportunities and in every opportunity uh, what i feel is a journey where we learn things hmm. uh, we explore and try to create an impact so next away we had a big ambition of creating a large impact hmm. and um, we had fairly been successful like um, we actually uh, have served uh, almost uh, 100000 tenants across and uh, we had uh, made their life easy uh, hmm. by a lot of people coming in and settling in and much easier but the whole thing was it's a huge market we are talking about 60000 crores market and we were like less than 2% that we have achieved hmm. so we had a long way to go and for that long way to go we actually needed someone who could come with not only just a capital support but who have done similar kind of businesses they have understood mm. they have delivered much larger things which we are now looking forward to mm. so that kind of support that kind of uh, originality that kind of uh, power came through arum so yeah. so what we uh, what we liked really about them is like uh, uh, they have been like hugely hugely successful in delivering certain things that at a large scale mm. so that was a perfect match for us mm. so when there is a perfect match we had the chance to fulfill what we had an ambition of so mm. so if you club everything together valuation is interim mm. right so valuation is not like it's not like we are kind of telling this is the end of it but what we said that this is a short term that we have actually kind of agreed to mm. in the interim just to have a larger value mm. at a later point of time mm. so that's how we have kind of if you ask me we have further postponed our outcomes mm. by making sure that we come across find the right partners find the right partners to take it further mm. and then create a much value a much larger value impact okay so also tell us during covid 19 pandemic every industry faced a problem and of course we saw especially with the real estate industry also facing huge problem when it came to the rental market right. when it came to the co living so as company nestor bay and as even hello world i'm sure must have faced problem because we noticed the properties had reduced in the pl- platform right? right so how did you manage this challenge and how did you overcome this particular challenge especially during the pandemic period in terms of um, covid uh, like majorly we were like uh, almost 90% down in terms of revenue within the first 3 months and uh, most of the amongst the uh, real estate prop tech players like any co living like any managed living mm. everyone was equally affected at that mm. point of time yeah. and uh, we had uh, seen ex- like very fast exodus of tenants uh, to their original natives and that way the rentals kind of dropped in terms of impact uh, nestav is on a purely res- like revenue share model as a marketplace right mm. uh, so we were not having any obligations to pay to the owners because whatever revenue the house makes that gets shared Mm. so that way we are little safe mm. um hello world there was a little impact mm. more because we had to still pay our uh, commitments uh, but they were everyone was more kind of uh, welcoming uh, to the uh, problems together and mm. we all the owners supported us mm. and uh, that's why we were able to manage mm. uh, the calamity much easier mm. the so if you compare to like nestor when hello world we were both okay and we kind of struggled through the mm. initial uh, during the lockdowns and all mm. but uh, post the lockdowns uh, the business kind of revamped back mm. uh, so for example uh, at hello world uh, post pandemic we would have grown like uh, almost three times now mm. at nestor when the largest challenge was we had a uh, lot of like compared to uh, pre pandemic we were almost having um, 60 70000 houses yeah pan india yeah so that reduced because because it was a marketplace yeah so in hello world we could control and still own the properties and still kind of manage the properties right. that advantage we didn't have to nest away mm. so those houses those supplies went away mm. and uh, post pandemic uh, many came many were sold out so that amount of those amount of houses actually could not come back right. so that re- led to reduction in the supply mm. side Mm. uh so we became almost like 60 70% drop 
but today we are okay. We, are, we have actually come back a long way hmm. and it is going well now. And also we have noticed in global market, the maximum majority is the rental market, right? Right. But when it comes to India, uh, the rental market is very few players involved. In right. Nest away, no broker. But when it comes to revenue, right, the revenue medium is quite narrowed. So we are seeing a lot of other players also, um, you know, coming up with new verticals by providing loans, by providing, you know, interiors, by providing renovation work, moving and packing. Do you think this kind of revenue model will only happen because of this rental market being a very restricted market? The kind of revenue that could come from a tenant and owner is going to restrict your revenue also and you need to expand yourself into these different verticals as well? Uh, Kritika, so here I have uh, a fundamental belief mm. that uh, the market is immense. Managed living, as you well rightly said, has not even been less than 1% of the overall time we are talking about in India. Yeah. So if you look at the successful stories we are talking about, right? So because you have mentioned about global landscape, so I'll take the opportunity to tell you how it's global, it's happening, right? So I'll talk about like US, like Adam Newman has raised 350 million now yeah. for the flow, right? Flow is what? Exactly residential rentals. Hmm. Exact thing what he's talking about is Nest Away. Yeah. Right. So, and Mac Anderson has put 350, he is well renowned for his investments, right? Um, we are talking about, but I will say that, okay, US, the landscape or the ecosystem is much different mm -hmm. than from what we have in India. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, let's take an example of Brazil. So in Brazil, uh, Quinto Anda, so Quinto Anda is the largest player uh, in the rental management. And again, these are all not in the sale resale. They're all in the rental side. Rental, yeah. Right. So Quinto Anda uh, manages roughly around 80,000 properties, 80,000 houses. Mm. Uh, across the major cities in Brazil and uh, recently they raised 106 billion valuation 5.5 or 6 billion valuation and uh, they're looking for and filing an IPO soon they're going public so and exactly if you if you look at his one of his interviews the founder says that uh, someone asked them that are you a replica of Trulia mm. then he says that no no I'm not a replica I'm a replica of Nestave so, okay. so, so that well, it's integrated, right? Yeah. So we're talking about like exactly similar things. So um, uh, then you go to take to China. So China, you have Mofang, you have Z Rooms, mm. all uh, five and a half, six billion. Everyone is above five billion in terms of valuations, mm. right? And everyone is like pre IPO or some have actually hit the IPO now. So all of that states like globally rental uh, managed living is winning, yeah. right? That offer. So why it told Brazil and China, people ecosystem, and um, uh, 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 market-wise, they're very, mm. very similar to India, right? Yeah. So why in India has not happened? I'll mm. say that much about the opportunity has never been that big because of the timing of the problems. So okay. for all of these players, actually, if you see, mm. like uh, we are talking about um, um, Z Rooms, mm. we are talking about Mofang, we are talking about Quinto Anda, mm. all of these are 2011, 2012 companies. Mm. So they had actually become quite matured, quite big mm. before the pandemic hit. True. So they were able to sell through the pandemic much easier yeah. than the Indian counterparts. Okay. India managed living started in 2015, late 2016. Yeah. So in three, four years, mm. they all faced pandemic. We are not ready. Mm. So if you ask like, for example, Hello World, Hello World started in 2019. Mm. In one year, we had not even completed one year pandemic happened. Yeah. So suddenly we are starting building. Now we have to build a fort. We are given an architecture to build a house. And mm. suddenly someone comes, no, you have to build a fort. It cannot happen. Right. Mm. Mm. So it takes time. Mm. So that's the reason if you ask about India landscape in managed living, mm. we didn't have the right timing. Mm. Uh, but I see it as a big opportunity. And it's a huge opportunity uh, in terms of uh, market size. Mm. Uh, definitely, uh, we see that that itself can create a multi-billion revenue size. Mm. So we really don't have to look into different verticals. Mm. We really don't have to look at other things. Why different verticals is a key is like the same customer don't want to go for multiple platforms. Like suppose the customer has come and he's actually taken a house. Now he wants to move his accommodation, uh, accommodation material from one house to other house. So then you can give portal services, yeah. which is like supporting your 
tenants supporting your customers true so till that extent i think that's fine mm. but as a market structure itself mm. uh, managed managed living is itself huge mm-hmm. so definitely huge to like if anyone is 4 to 5% mm. is doing like at least uh, 1 to 1 and 1/2 to 2 billion revenue per mm. year one but two like i think more than 10000 crores mm. definitely that's a size if you just do managed living properly i agree but what do you think when it comes to vcs because when we see uh, venture capitalists getting into real estate and for them this rental market is something which is quite they are skeptical about they are pouring in money when it comes to b2b they are e-commerce business in uh, real estate they are also pouring bit money into which is uh, having this brokerage model because you know what the kind of revenue will come in but when it comes to rental market like how i quoted earlier why i'm seeing other uh, players getting into different verticals is because they are either the market is not mature or you are not able to convince the vc that this model when it comes to rental market market which is in comparison to global uh, you know having the major uh, you know Uh, coverage or capture in the market in india do you think the maturity level of this understanding is still not there and why do you think when it comes to vc they are a bit skeptical about this particular market so vc uh, i think uh, i uh, really believe this skepticism that you are talking about like the negativity people typical vcs have the doubts over the uh, managed living is post pandemic hmm right so the pandemic actually uh, kind of um, uh, changed the way people were living right so lot of vcs that i also talk to today they see that as an opportunity also hmm. right because the way people were living has substantially changed right so if you look at people pre pandemic office was the only place people yeah. used to go yeah. right morning evening five days six days a week in india we are then office right hmm. suddenly that went out of people's life and like just vanished due to the mm. pandemic right and then house became important True. so number of houses started people earning like people started even the rental accommodations and today what we are talking about um is like uh, where mostly tenants are much more focused in having an experience but not an ownership right yeah. so that as you so now what where people are going they need a home mm. like our all other generations everyone needs a home yeah but they don't want to own it Mm. they need a home where they can have an experience mm. they can have memories everything but they don't want to buy it true so now this transition of uh, behavior is happening drastically and lot of new kind of vcs are signing up for that mm. there was a time when this managed co living started across the globe mm. and that was in 2015 2016 mm. uh, where like i think most of the global landscape like uh, for quinto and tiger global was investor in quinto and also as in nestle right yeah. Uh, similarly, Goldman Sachs. Lot of even at Nestle, we got all the major uh, VCs invest mm. at that point. Mm. So at that point, it seemed like this market will just evolve, mm. and uh, it will actually be, become much easy and much bigger mm. with time. Mm. Uh, so that assumption faced real challenges during the COVID times. Mm. Uh, but after COVID, now we are almost one and a half years, mm. and what I see that over the next couple of years. Uh, this market will attract good amount of uh, investments because now people have understood what happens if another pandemic happens yeah i was so, going to ask that only so, what if another pandemic happens are we prepared yes. especially this particular market correct so that is how uh, markets how the how these startups how these companies have evolved mm. is now we have a uh, book mm. which says that what we need to do when this happens true and true. i assume most of the other players would also have that Mm. so that maturity that uh, that has what how we have evolved uh, that has created like yes we can handle pandemics we can handle any kind of uh, uh, this kind of things in the future mm. which mm. can create this ecosystem because no one doubts the uh, size of the market yeah. if you ask me right True. Uh, so we are much bigger in size than brazil uh, mm. for sure uh, but what people doubt is how we will be successful and who will be successful so any company that comes in the top 3 mm. of this and they're successful you are because see to be successful we are talking about the unit economics has to be good right yeah uh, so we cannot have a bad unit economy at which can scale so then True. you have a like the energy will not last mm. uh, so we see have evolved so like if you ask me like um, in 2015 when we started nestave it was an era of gmv right we are talking about gmvs 
Mm. Not us, any company that you talk, we, our numbers will always start with GMVs, mm. right? Today we are talking about PATs. From an era of GMV, we are back to an era of PAT. Mm. So that transitions is what VCs have come, how VCs have evolved in India, mm. right? So now, if anyone is talking about raising funds, mm. it's just not an idea. Mm. It's a healthy unit economics yeah. with good amount of traction, True. which you have proven. You are already having positive EBITDA or you are talking about PAT. True. Yeah. And then you are at a good good sizable size. Mm. At this point, then you will have a lot of investment that can come. Mm. So what we are talking about is not like this segment is not having funds mm. or the funding. But it is overall, if you see the startup ecosystem, mm. it is going through that transition now. Okay. And where, where I see this is a very big opportunity mm. and a lot of players. Mm. We'll have substantial funding that will come in mm. over time. 